All right, this is long overdue and it's a weekend and I have help since it's a weekend. My, my pup is here to, uh, to help me as well and he might want to be part of this show. He looks like a full grown golden retriever but he's only eight months old and he loves his squeaky toy. Uh, We're gonna go through and let me adjust this a little bit. We're gonna take some notes on volume. I think you can fill out the uh, first part of this. You can download it. Um, it says measuring mass and volume. And the first part just talks about mass. And mass is just um, the amount of matter in an object. But we don't say matter. We usually just say stuff. So we would just say the amount of stuff in an object how much of whatever it is. If you have a can of um, Coke, it's how much Coke you have in there. If you have a, uh, uh, a hamburger, how much bun and meat and whatever condiments you put on there. Just whatever stuff there is there. The scientific term is matter, but uh, most of the time we don't talk that way. Um, there is a back to this, which is a lab, but that's gonna be hard to do at home because you don't have, you don't have the objects. Um, so uh, we're going to uh, go through and I'll have to give you the notes. The first part you can get, uh, you can get from the um, using the triple beam balance video um, that I will have uh, linked uh, with this uh, assignment as well. And then this will be the bottom part, the three ways to find volume. So first of all, volume, um, is one of those words that in English language we come up with a couple of different uses for. One is how loud something is. A volume can be louder or it can be quieter. That's different. We'll study that later in the year when we talk about waves and we'll talk about what the shape of the wave is uh, when it's a quiet wave or when it's a loud wave. Uh, but for this part, for the chemistry part, uh, Hopefully you can read that. The amount of space an object or substance occupies. Usually we talk about, um, and I'm just going to move this, get it out of the way, and see if we can't get this easier for you to read. try and edit some of that out but it is the weekend so maybe not as much as I would like to but the amount of space now it's um, if you have an object for example uh, if we're talking about this eraser the amount of space it takes up is easy to think but it can also be um, a cup, how much it can space is inside usually is what uh, it is, or it could be the air in this room. It can be something that's not easily picked up and measured, um, but uh, that too has a volume. Now, um, the first type of sub that we're gonna do is a liquid, probably some of the easiest to measure and we're going to use an instrument that's called graduated cylinder. And graduated just means it has marks for measuring. A test tube would be just a cylinder. Uh, a graduated cylinder has those marks for uh, measuring on it. And that's what graduate, when you graduate from high school, you have measured up and you've had enough of the math and enough of the science, enough of English, enough of history. You've met the measurements that are required and then you can graduate. Um, now when you put a liquid into the graduated cylinder, it makes a curved surface at the top. It's not level uh, across, especially with a glass graduated cylinder. And that, that curved surface is called a meniscus. Same as the meniscus like you have in your shoulder, the, any ball and socket joint, and you can have a tear in your meniscus. That's just a curved surface of muscle where uh, it attaches in a smooth place for um, 
the ball to actually articulate back and forth. Now when you look at it sideways with water in there, a lot of times it really just looks like uh, a thick kind of a skin at the top. Yeah, you can still see that um, at the top. And when you read that, you're going to read the bottom of the meniscus. That's the way, I mean, we could have it so that you read the top or the middle uh, of that, but it is it is made, measured to find the bottom uh, of the meniscus is where it actually is read and the units that we're going to use are milliliters. Okay, so each one of them, they usually uh, they have a marked out, and depending on how big they are, this is what a graduated cylinder is going to look like. And um, this one has every little line is one milliliter. It's not very precise. Is not much room between 40 and 41 milliliters. So it's hard to get anything closer than a single milliliter. Now you can estimate um, in between a little bit, but you'll see when you see this thicker part, it, it's really hard to get a real accurate measure, but we've got to do the best that we can. Uh, so that's how we find liquid. Now the second type is a regular solid. A regular solid is anything that we have a formula for. We are going to talk about just cubes and rectangular prisms and um, the formula you're familiar with, I'm sure you've done it in math, uh, volume equals length times width times height. It doesn't matter which order, it doesn't matter what you call length, width, or height because multiplication is commutative. I'm sure you've heard that in uh, math as well. And most of the time, that's the order we put it in, written simply, V equals L times W times H. Now, it doesn't matter how you measure them, as long as you measure the right things. If you, whatever surface is on the top, if you measure across on that, and then how far it is up off of the surface. We get the same thing if we tip this up and we measure across on that and then all the way up from there. And it doesn't matter what you call length times width or what you call length or width or height as long as you have those three measurements and you multiply them. Now if for this one, let's say that it has nice simple numbers. It's got four centimeters this way, three centimeters this way, and two that way. And it doesn't matter what we call length, width, or height, but if we just say the volume equals four centimeters times three centimeters times two centimeters, the uh, numbers are easy. Four times three is 12 times two. So we get that volume equals 24, but we have to do the same thing with the units. If we took four times three times two, we have to take centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. Nobody wants to write that, nobody wants to say that, so we just say 24 centimeters cubed. Now, students a lot of time, because you've done more with, with um, area in math, and they well, that would be centimeters squared. Um, but, uh, so students want to put squared on there, but uh, volume is always going to be a cubed in there. So we measured liquids in milliliters. The solids, the regular solids, are going to be in centimeters cubed. Now some things we don't have a formula for. Uh, now one of the things that they're going to do in a lab is they're going to measure the volume of a marble. We do have a formula for uh, a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, but uh, measuring a uh, the diameter so we can find the radius of it, uh, of a round object with a flat instrument like a ruler is difficult. So we're going to use, we're going to call that an irregular solid. And an irregular solid is anything that we don't have a formula for. And to do that, we're going to use displacement. Archimedes came up with this um, idea, basically that, you know, if when you take a bath, if you fill up the bathtub to a certain level, when you get in, 
you take up some of the space so the water is pushed up and so that the water goes up inside. If you filled it right to the brim of uh, the tub, that usually there's something in there that make sure that you can't do that because of the mess that can happen. But if you could, and when you got in, it would come and it would run over. Um, so to do that, we're going to go through three steps. First one is to put water in a graduated cylinder, and just enough uh, so that it will cover the object that you're going to put in there. Make sure it's not so much that when you put the object in, it's going to go up above the numbers, but uh, enough to cover it and make sure that you record the amount. That's important because you get to the end, and if you haven't done that part, then uh, we aren't sure uh, what the volume is. So if we have, here's our graduated cylinder, and let's say we want to find the volume of this heart. I do not have a formula for finding the volume of a heart, so we put water in, and let's say that's probably hard for you to see, but it goes up to and it doesn't have that nice curved surface at the top. But um, let me see if I can make it a little bit darker for you there. Hopefully, maybe choose a little bit different blue. It doesn't really make any difference, I don't think. I don't know. Get the idea. It's up to 50, so we would take and record the amount is 50, and now we're back to milliliters because we're using a graduated cylinder. This one goes up to 100, and on the actual graduated cylinder, it will tell you that it's reading in milliliters. Second step, whoops, is lost. three. Well, that's three. There we go. Okay, carefully put the objects in the graduate. Carefully because if you just drop it in, there's usually a very satisfying kerplunk and we like that sound, but um, it, if any water splashes out, you got to start over again. So I'm going to carefully, well actually not in this one, let's put it into this one. And I put it down there. And now, oh, and I think I know what I did on the other one. Let me try it here real quick. Yeah. Maybe you can see that a little bit better. And each one of these, the way it's marked, each one of these there's, uh, is worth two because there's only five between 60 and 70. So this goes up to 62 for six. So our second reading is 66 milliliters. Now this one isn't as important because it's still there. You can see it, but you can see that if I hadn't, if I hadn't, uh, written down what the first one was, this wouldn't be here, we just have one, I wouldn't know what to do with this 66. But I've, since I've written it down, now step three is simply number two minus number one. 66 minus 50 is 16 milliliters. So that heart that we put in there has a volume of 16 milliliters. All right, so write down those on the front of this sheet as the notes and then submit it and uh, we'll, you'll get points for that. Fortunately, the back, I probably won't even send the back with you. It's just uh, the things that they had to uh, measure um, in class. We also, as a reminder, that um, every day, well, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, 
we are zooming um, so you can kind of keep up with what's going on in class they're doing different labs now uh, uh, there's one you get notes that you can take on density um, I think it's the assignment the notes that are listed there say you are my density um, a reference to back to the future uh, but you can um, you can kind of see what's going on uh, with that uh, we're finishing up the density of solids and starting density of liquids lab um, and if you have any questions that's a great time to get it answered and when we start the next part and we start uh, on significant digits that will be the easiest way to do it just to zoom in with us and I'll just have the, um, the zoom going on the uh, smart board so you can see what we're doing you can ask questions right in real time um, almost like you're sitting here without having to be here and uh, the, our, our class time is from 241 to 330 on Monday Tuesday and Thursday and Friday and on Wednesday it's a little bit shorter and a little bit later because we have chapel between first and second hour so it's from 247 to 330 and uh, there is a page in there called zoom that gives you all of that and send me any emails uh, or notes on canvas and I will help you out and um, I am getting helped with this with my pup let me show you I don't know if you'll even sit here long enough to show you come here Scott sit stay good boy no stay <laughs> he's not gonna want to cooperate so I will take this off of the stand and you can see my assistant there we go sit sit there we go that's scout that's my assistant helping me helping me uh, through this and he just thinks he should get uh, another treat for being such a good dog and and uh, or go for a walk but um, we will um, see you and hopefully we'll see you on zoom